Hey guys, welcome back to Bixby's Beer Reviews. Great to see you again. Uh, so we've been on this journey together a while now, and it's time to start a new chapter in our exploration of all the, the wonderful hops that are out there in the American craft brewing scene. Now, we've done our, our big five hazy hops that you see everywhere. We've done the next five that you see in supporting roles almost as often. We've you know we've checked out the three C's that go into West Coast hops, and we started down the path of checking out the, the many New Zealand varietals that are, are trying to follow Motueka into uh, to common usage. So uh, we've sort of covered a lot of the widely available hops. And now it's time to start checking out what I can only call the weirdos. Uh, hops you see occasionally, uh, but then nonetheless have some sort of particular feature or, or pungency or, or other usage that, that makes them appear uh, now and again uh, in beers. And ones really that I've just, I've never encountered before and that I, I may not know what we're gonna get into. So I cannot think of a better beer to start out with than from uh, Three Notched, uh, from their illustrious nephrology series. It gives us so many great single hop beers. We're gonna check out Zappa. Uh, as you can tell by the, the colorful can art, uh, Zappa is an unusual hop, uh, one that, uh, again, I have never heard of before and never tried. Um, I only know a couple things about it. One, it is actually named after Frank Zappa, a wild, weird dude, if there ever was one, uh, uh, in consultation with his family, maybe the first musician named hop that, that, that I can think of, at least. Uh, it's also a purely wild neo mexicanist hop. Uh, they found it growing wild in New Mexico, and they cultivated it. It's not intentionally bred from any other stock. Uh, it's just itself, and it came to be uh, on its own. So uh, a strange one, an unusual one, and again, something that, that I don't know what's gonna be going on inside this glass. So let's crack it open, take a look. You know, it is a, a strange thing to me that a hop could have been growing all these years out in the wild. Just hanging out, undiscovered by craft brewers, ready to make its appearance on the scene. Uh, not gonna belabor the point here, it's a hazy IPA. You, you know what the classic New England IPA appearance is, that's what we got here. Let's just dive right into the aroma. Uh, well, this is this is the right hop to start the series off with because this is a uh, bizarre aroma. Uh, I certainly get some tropical notes up front. I wouldn't describe it as the sort of intense pungent tropicality that we get with Strata or some of its ilk. It's it's a more restrained, uh, musky, almost melony tropicality, kind of a, a little bit of cantaloupe, um, maybe a little bit of passion fruit or guava, but it's very restrained. It's not the kind of punch in the nose that you get from a lot of the more popular hops, but there's something counterbalancing it. I can't, it's kind of a minty note, but it's, it's a, I wanna say at once a little bit more vegetal and also a little bit more herbal than that. Uh, I don't know exactly where it's going. It smells a little bit like some of the uh, the pollinator flowers that I grow in my backyard, uh, hyssop flowers, if you've ever smelled those, or hyssop leaves. Uh, it has a little bit of an anise character to it. Not quite full on licorice, but it is a very distinctive herbal aroma that I have absolutely never encountered. And it's a very interesting contrast to the tropical notes. You know, we've seen something like Simcoe serving as a very, very potent contrast to, to tropical hops like Citra or, or Galaxy in, in a way that, that contrasts very cleanly and very clearly. This is a little bit more muddled and a little bit more restrained though. So I'm, I'm very excited. Let's try this beer. Mm. And, and there it is again. The, the melony character is, is even more present uh, in the taste here to me. Uh, certainly still a little bit of the passion fruit that I tasted earlier, but much more of a cantaloupe, honeydew, melon dankness, uh, which, which is very pleasing, but again, offset by this very distinctive herbal character that, you know, I, I'm, I think I've found a number of, of close analogies to it, but I still can't quite place my finger on what it is. Uh, again, it's it's somewhere between mint and anise and, and uh, hyssop and then even a little bit, of, we, we have wild heather in the backyard. It's something like that too. It is a very, very particular flavor. You know, what comes to mind honestly is Vic Secret and then the way that Vic Secret, instead of having the intense pineapple tropicality of Galaxy has a more restrained tropical note, but then also has that little bit of a grassy kind of a, peppery note to it that can, that can be a little more subtle and more interesting, but it's not that flavor. It's, it's very different. And so as advertised, this is a wild, weird hop. Uh, and 
I honestly want to see it again. I'm not sure how honestly it would interact with other hops. So I'm very eager to try it now in other applications. So again, some tropical melon and some question mark mint herbal thingy going on. Uh, but that's that's what we're here for. We're here to try out some of this, this new crazy stuff. So three notched. Uh, thank you for putting Zappa hops uh, in a beer. Uh, it's wonderful. I enjoy it. I love your nephrology series. Uh, I'm always going to check out even hops that I'm very familiar with because I love seeing them showcased. So thanks for joining me on the first of what hopefully will be uh, many weird hop adventures as we check out some of the lesser used but but still out there hops that, that you might run into at the beer store. And uh, until next time, like, share, and subscribe. And uh, I'll see you then. Bye now.